Hey everyone, Matron here, bringing you another StarCraft II commentary, this time Game 5 of the Best of 5 series between Rude Cats spawning as the Yellow Zerg, and his opponent PPG Bubbles spawning as the Blue Protoss. This will be the fifth and final game between these two players in the Justin TV Invitational Tournament, and both players making it through a very difficult field to get here, and it's been back and forth in this series, Bubbles up one to nothing, uh, actually Cats up one to nothing at the very start, doing a proxy hatch on Bubbles, then Bubbles coming back with some nice builds of his own. Uh, especially in the last game, I felt like he really had a chance to win with a nice proxy in Katz's base, but Katz was able to defend against it, get out some mutas, and Bubbles had no answer for them. So now we're in the final game on Zalnaga Caverns, and really looking for Katz to be a bit more aggressive. He's allowed Bubbles to really dictate the pace of the game for the most part, with a few cannon contains, some good defense as well, and Bubbles has had some nice timing attacks, uh, some DTs, morphed into Archons, and then in the last game I felt like he had a really good chance to close out the series 3-1, but Katz was able to even it up, and that's where we stand here. We see the pylon at the bottom of the ramp for Bubbles. I imagine he will be throwing down a forge here. It looks like he will be doing that. So threatening the cannon contain once again, we see Katz bringing a drone off to follow around this probe. Again, he does not want to get uh, pylon and cannoned in. It can be quite a pain, and he's going to be hiding that drone in the base of Bubbles at this point, so he may be trying to get another proxy hatch in here, depending on what his Protoss opponent does. Now Bubbles could be uh, work this much more the standard way. Uh, perhaps go for a fast expansion. I believe he just scouted the drone of Cats, so he knows that he's up there. And now Cats getting down a fast expansion of his own. Still has multiple drones here, trying to prevent pylons from going down. And just hold positioning one drone prevents that second pylon from walling off the bottom of the ramp. As we see uh, Bubbles just doing laps into Cats' base at this point, and Cats no pool quite yet, so he's up to 18 harvesters without a pool. He knows his opponent has that forge down, and now Bubbles getting down a fast expansion of his own, so both players just macroing up, making no units, and finally we have a spawning pool coming out for Cats. I imagine a cannon will need to be added for Bubbles here, and still threatening the, uh, the wall off on the ramp of Cats, and with this one, dr uh, one probe, he's keeping a drone on him and a second one busy at the bottom of this ramp. If we check the income count, it is 18 harvesters to 17, and both players about to have their expansions finish. We're having a gateway and another pylon come in for Bubbles, so interesting he has not thrown down a cannon quite yet. Still dancing around with this probe, and he's going to want to get a timing on this gas. He sees that the gas finishing right before the pool. So Katz uh, is going to have a lot of possibilities open up here. He can get speed going in just a moment. He can go for a fast lair, though he has been uh, foregoing early lairs in favor of more of a macro style, using Zerglings like Katz likes to do. So I wonder what he will be going for in this game as finally a cannon goes down now that the pool has finished. If we check the production tab, it looks like two queens on the way for Katz. So neither player making any offensive units at the moment. The gateway has finished for Bubbles. So we'll see when he does start that cybernetic score, or whether he just uh, continues to try to probe up here. Uh, perhaps throw down another cannon or two for defense. This is a pretty big uh, opening for Zerglings to come in. They could stream into both the main and the natural at this point. Needs to add at least another building, and it looks like that's where he's going to put the cybernetic score. So with a second cannon, uh, it's going to be quite well defended at this point. And if he gets out a sentry, he can have a nice force field here, deny any sort of zergling attacks. We do see a fast lair for coming from Cat, so I like this play. He's really been switching it up now. Uh, early on in these games, he has been going for more of a macro style, and I feel like he went lair pretty late in a lot of the games, uh, and that's part of the reason that he lost. But now getting up that lair, it's about uh, halfway complete, and getting up the roach warren as well. And this signifies to me, adding the second extractor here, that he's going to be pushing out with a lot of roach, perhaps some hydro pressure as well. We'll see if he throws down an evolution chamber, and Bubbles not getting quite the scouting information that he wants. If we check his view, he's not able to see the uh, the roach warren, though he might have been able to see that lair. Yes, he did. And Katz, at this point, knows about his opponent uh, walling in here, does not know for any sort of tech which Bubbles is going for, as we see Bubbles adding a number of gateways, so he'll soon be on three gates, and it looks like he's got uh, just two of the gas working right now, Katz also on two gas, we check the army tab, it is 125 to 50, so Katz just has these zerglings, they're going to be doing a little bit of scouting, finding the photon cannon there, and that zergling does go down. 
So Katz is getting the Glial reconstitution as well as Burrow and starting to produce a few roaches here. And there's certainly a timing against the uh, the cannon fast expand where you can really overwhelm your opponent with roaches. The roaches can outrange a lot of these cannons so he can pick off some pylons and gateways, really sort of bottle up his opponent like he did in the first game with the proxy hatchery. So we'll see how many roaches he invests in. It looks like he's also getting up a hydralis den. Not really sure about the placement on this as any sort of probe is going to be able to come up here and scat it right away. And adding on a few more extractors as well. So he's really going to be able to afford both the roaches and the hydras as well as some upgrades. I imagine he will be going for an evolution chamber at some point here as well. So it looks like he's doing a decent job spreading creep, getting down two active tumors at this point, and just taking out the destructible rocks, putting these units to work. And again, as I mentioned in the previous game, it really separates the uh, the pro players, the top players, from the uh, the people just below them is they always have their units doing something. Instead of having these roaches back on creep, he is really being active, taking down these rocks, preparing just in case he needs to get up an expansion there quickly. We see Bubbles adding another gate and getting a all important plus one ground weapon uh, upgrade for those zealots and sentries and stalkers. That's going to allow the zealots to two shot zerglings. As we see cats pushing out here now that Glial Reconstitution has completed, the army's pretty even, but again, now that Roach Speed has completed, he's going to be able to come in here and start picking off some things. He's going to two shot those, uh, those sentries and the cannons giving sight to the units of PPG bubbles, so that burrow is not going to work out for cats. He's actually going to lose a majority of those roaches. So Bubbles doing a nice job defending there. Imagine that he's going to want to warp in and do some sort of counterattack. Wow, the army uh, disparity 1600 to 475. Let's check the production tab. Cats has seven hydras on the way as well as an overseer. And we do see that a robotics facility is on the way for Bubbles. He knows that Burrow is in play. He's going to want to get up some sort of detector before he pushes out for an attack, taking down his own destructible rocks here as Cat's establishing a third at that gold expansion. We do see the Overseer coming in here, perhaps going to be laying down a, uh, a changeling or figuring uh, what sort of buildings he can put that contaminate on. As Bubbles working off, it looks like uh, seven gates at this point, three in the main and four out by the natural, as well as the robotics facility. So he's getting out his first observer, and again, he will not want to move out until that observer it comes with the army. And now this timing, it looks like he is going to push out. If we check the army tab, Katz has really evened it up, 2600 to 2200. So Bubbles having to wait for that observer, give Katz time to macro up again, and Katz may be able to defend against this push. Hydra's very powerful against the Stalker, Zealots, and Sentries. He was going to want to get up some Guardian Shields here, as well as some Force Fields, trying to deny uh, range to the Hydra's in the back. But it looks like the Concave set up pretty nicely for Katz at this point. And if we check the production tab, he's got eight more roaches and a hydra, as well as a few more zerglings. He should be able to push back this pressure. He's going to want to attack all at once, get a nice surround on these units, as he is doing quite a bit of damage. Again, the hydra is just ripping through those gateway units. Coming in here with a few queens as well. They are going to be able to get some transfuses onto those roaches. Roaches with 145 health, so a large health pool that you can heal up quite easily. And just a transfuse or three can really turn the tide of a battle. So it looks like Cat's trying to keep spreading that tumor. Bubbles was able to take down a tumor or two now that he does have the observer in position, acting as a, a, uh, a detector there. And now maybe pushing out for a counterattack is Cat's. If we check the army tab, 2100, 1700. So Cat's pushing in here. He sees his opponent does not have the gold. But there is an immortal on the field going to be very powerful against those roaches, especially with the level 1 upgrade. 55 damage to those armored roaches. But if he can get in there with those Zerglings, he can get a surround on the Immortal, take down those shields quickly. As well as the Hydras also have a very fast attack speed. They can really chew through the shields of the Immortal. So we'll see who's able to micro this battle better. It looks like Cat's actually going to pull back, leaving one Zergling right outside the base of Bubbles just in case he pushes out. Bubbles seeing that, making sure he takes down that Zergling, does not want to lose the information war at this point. He's got observers following his opponent. So he's going to know all the movement of cats, and cats is going to be totally blind, aside from some of these uh, these zerglings that cats is trying to get into the base of bubbles. But bubbles doing a nice job cleaning them up, like we usually see a ton of cannons guarding the third. 
of bubbles as it's about to come up. If we check the income tab, 56 harvesters to 55. So Katz does have that gold. He's got quite the advantage uh, for the moment, but once the third comes up for bubbles, they have a pretty even harvester count, and I imagine he will catch right back up. The Overseer pushing in here, trying to contaminate a warp gate. I'm not sure it was really worth it, losing that Overseer. So he's not going to be able to find any of those observers which are in his army right now. And could have laid down a changeling or two as the game progressed. Not really sure the one warp gate cooldown was quite worth it. Maybe if he had gotten on the robotics bay or the robotics facility, stop these colossus from coming out, that would have been a good use of the contaminate. Cat's getting up a fourth base, and this is something he really likes to do and a lot of Zerg like to do. They're very defensive and they just macro up until they get up to 200, 200, and then they just continue to reinforce off the extra bank minerals and larva and totally overwhelm you. The Protoss player wants to keep an even food count or slightly ahead of the Zerg and then really take advantage of the fact that a even food count uh, gives the advantage to the Protoss player. Looks like we have Extended Thermal Lance about to complete and one of, uh, one of the Colossus coming out. There goes the alarm. So two Colossus about to come out, four bubbles, so he will be able to start shredding through these Hydralis. The Hydralis with 80 life, and that's not a lot compared to the Colossus, especially the way the Hydralis get into a nice concave to attack. The Colossus loves that as those beams go left to right and really chew through those Hydralisks. Checking the production tab, it looks like we have a second robotics facility being added for bubbles, so doing a nice job here. Continues to add production structures every time he takes a new base. That's a big mistake a lot of people do not do. They continue to stay on the same number of gates. They get really high on minerals, but now he will be pushing out both Colossus and Immortals out of these two robotics facilities, as well as warping in constantly off those warp gates. He also is working on Zealot Charge, so he's gonna be able to keep those Hydras and Roaches away from the all-important Colossus and Immortals, using those Zealots to tank a lot of damage up front. Keeping that Observer on the move wants to make sure that there are no bases going down for Cats. Cats keeping those Zerglings there, functioning in much the same capacity, wants to know exactly when his uh, opponent is on that fourth base. So Cats getting up a proxy hatchery here, wants uh, to maybe macro up a little bit. We have it Hive on the way as well. And it looks like uh, a few Corruptors, so maybe adding some Broodlords to the bunch. If we look at the upgrades, it looks like he's working on the ground carapace level 2, as well as the missile attacks level 2. And now it looks like Bubble's going to be pushing out here. He's about maxed both players 198 of 198, or of 200. So at this point, there's a few spore crawlers on the field as well, maybe just to catch the observer too. And a good concave for cats coming here, as a nice force field's going down for Bubbles. Wow, really needs to pull back these uh, Colossus, try to chew through those Corruptors with these Stalkers. Does not want to take on either the Roaches or the Hydras quite yet. Wants to try to pull back here, and another Colossus goes down. Bubbles losing all those Colossus to the Corruptors, so great counter by cats. And now the Hydras and Roaches going to town on these Stalkers, and this may not be enough Stalkers if we check out the uh, production tab. 16 Roaches, 14 Zerglings on the way for Cats, so just out macroing his opponent, but another set of Stalkers and a Colossus coming in. Colossus doing its best to uh, micro away, but the Corruption does go down on it, and those Corruptors are just so very powerful against those massive Colossus. Cat's doing a bit of a retreat here, and again, he just produced a lot of units, so he's going to want to try to uh, group up all again, or all together again. He's getting that Greater Spire up, as well as a few more Corruptors. If we check the army tab of both players, now 4,000 to 2,200. Bubbles doing his best to spend some of these extra minerals, getting down Photon Cannons, having to cancel these, though, before they do go down. Now a number of Warp Ins, a lot of Zealots coming in here, trying to uh, chew through these Roaches. But again, the Roaches have that 2 armor now, just kicking in. So they're going to uh, take severely reduced damage from those Zealots. The Zealots do have two upgrades, though. And now Bubbles giving the uh, the GG there. Congratulating Cats for winning this Justin Invitational Tournament. And a very solid play by Cats. I like that he got out the lair a little bit faster than his opponent. He read that his... Uh, that Bubbles here was going for the Forge Fast Expand. He knew he could macro up. He didn't have to make too many Zerglings. And Bubbles really should have tried to pressure him with an early Zealot or two, or at least a few uh, pylons and cannons that he would have had to pull drones off of uh, to take down, or maybe some Zerglings. Because if you let a Zerg like Katz really macro up and tech up, it's going to spell the, uh, the end for you. So Katz was able to get up those Roaches, did a decent amount of... Uh, damage in the first defense and then just continued to back her up, got on this four bases, and in the end was about to start coming out with tier three.
So we saw both armies uh, engaging there with 198 food as well, and cats just macroing up after the, uh, the engagement there. Some nice force fields by bubbles, but the corruptors were able to take down all those colossi, and then it was uh, just GG a few minutes later for bubbles. So very nice series. Uh, I like the play of both players. Had never heard of bubbles before, but he had some pretty solid builds in those games. So hopefully you'll hear a bit more from him in the future. As always, if you are looking for more StarCraft II action, check out my channel Matron StarCraft at YouTube.com. It really helps me out when you leave comments uh, talking about the games, the players, what you liked about the cast, what I can improve upon, and if you give thumbs up or subscribe, both those things really help me out. So we have a great series here finishing up with a cat's win, and I think I'm going to be adding that proxy hatchery play to my playstyle as well. So thanks for watching this one. Take care.